Hi there, welcome back. Part two of, of this tutorial and in part two we're going to talk about how to simulate the system that we just analyzed in part one using um, uh, a, a simulation package called MATLAB. So if you remember, this is where we were last time we wrote down three ordinary differential equations to simulate the operation of this mikhail semantin rate law. We're going to bring up a program called MATLAB which um, if you have it installed on your computer you have an icon something like this you open the program up and I don't know why it's taking so long um, and, th and there you have it okay so you'll see um, depending on on your settings and what version of MATLAB you're running you might see something you're going to see something might see something slightly different but basically one of the windows you're going to get is something called the command window you can see that right here so in the command window you can you can execute all, all sorts of commands so in some ways MATLAB is, is is really just a fancy calculator we could calculate something like <coughs> excuse me one plus one and we get two well, kind of straightforward. Uh, the other, uh, another thing we can do, many we can do many things in MATLAB. One of the other things we can do is we can assign variables. Very useful. Like for example, if we yes, we we initialized a variable called x and we gave it a value of two, then x equals two, and we could do something like we could say, well, what is two times x? And we should get four. Okay, fantastic. MATLAB has lots of built-in functions for all the standard kind of mathematical things that, that you know about like sine, sine of x, and well, remember x is 2, so the sine of 2 is, that's what the sine of 2 is, I guess. One of the important features of MATLAB I is that it can it can s manipulate and store vectors. So if I wanted to, for example, uh, what, what a vector for, for, for our, our purposes here, a vector is just a list of numbers. So a vector, a list of numbers could be, uh, for example, 1, 2, 5, 7, 9, 10. That's a list of numbers. That's a vector. Okay, I can take. Um, uh, I can multiply the vector by two. Right, I get something like that. Um, I can do lots of mathematical manipulations with with, with vectors. Okay, so it, so in a, in a command window you can do all kinds of interesting things, but the real power of MATLAB is in writing programs to be able to um, to um, um, execute numerical algorithms to do things like um, simulate our system of ordinary differential equations. So let's go back to our system of ordinary differential equations, which you can see here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so so um, the main thing we have to do in MATLAB if we want to be able to simulate a system of ordinary differential equations is to write a program or a function which will um, um, compute the right hand sides or compute the DX, the, the DDTs, the DSDT, the DPDT, and the ED, DEDT for the model. So um, I'm going to say new function. And the nice thing about that is when I say new function, MATLAB tells me a little bit about the syntax I have to use for that function. So, for example, a function, I use this keyword function, and I have to give it input arguments and I have to give it output arguments and instead of untitled I'm going to name my function dx dt okay where x is going to represent the vector of the state variables s p and e and the output is going to be I'll call it f okay and we'll compute f as the values of these uh, of dsdt dpdt and edt now this is something interesting so you see these little um, uh, percent signs here with green text after it. So what that means, that's that's called a comment. And so anything, it's useful to put comments in your code because it tells you, um, you, you would put, for example, if we had time, a detailed explanation, like it says, of what's in the function so that somebody else or you can go back and look at it and kind of get an idea of what you were trying to do and, 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 and how you did it. So we're not going to comment the text. But essentially, um, what, what comes after the text, is, what it comes after this comment symbol is not interpreted by MATLAB. So you can write anything you want. You could write, uh, happy birthday if you wanted to, and it, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so input arguments. We're going to assume that the input argument is a vector called x, okay, um, and x is going to list these three variables, right, so um, x, I, I can use this, these, this kind of syntax to get the first entry of x, 
So S, X1 will be S, um, P will be X2, and E will be, will be X3. And then I can write down my differential equations, dS dt, I'll call the first one, and dS dt, just translating here from the mathematics, minus k1 times e times s, plus k, I'll call k minus 1 km1 times um, e0 minus e, okay? And a couple of things to point out here. I put a semicolon at the end of, of that command. Oh, I, I already did it up here, too. So what that does is it suppresses the output. So if we go down to the command window, for example, remember 2 times v gave spit out 2 times the, the entries of v. If I said 2 times v and I put a semicolon at the end, it doesn't spit out that output. And, and that's going to be useful because when we call this function, we don't want it to, to spit out all these intermediate calculations that it's doing. I could, um, instead of S, I, I could have um, used X1 every time I want to I want to use S, and then I wouldn't have to, I could, I could not use this command if I wanted to, but just to kind of keep things uh, simple and clean, I can understand what we're doing, I'm assigning these variables S, P, and E to state variable 1, state variable 2, state variable 3. This will become clear as you go through some, some examples on your own. Um, dp dt, right? k2 times e0 minus e. And dE dt is minus k1 times e times s plus k minus 1 times e0 minus e plus k2 times e0 minus e. Okay? And now, um, this function is not complete because I haven't defined values for k1, k2, k minus 1, and e0. Okay? We can do that. Um, give arbitrary values. So k1, um, let's make up a value of 1. Um, if we wanted to, we could, we could say, well, k1 has the units of, um, da, 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 of in, inverse time, inverse concentration. If I wanted to, I could use a comment to tell us that it has units of per second, uh, per, per millimolar, or something like that. Um, I said that's a comment. It's not interpreted. Uh, K minus 1, 1, uh, K2, 1. We can change these values and see what happens in E0. Um, has units of concentration, well, we'll say, well, what the heck, everything's one. There's one millimolar, which is an awful lot, of the enzyme present. Okay, and so now I can actually, that's my whole function. I'll save it, and um, I give it, um, and, and then I, I ought to be able to call that function, give it the, R ah, well, I haven't, what I haven't done here is is assign the value of the output argument f. So the output argument f is, is, is going to be a vector of these these derivatives, ds, dt, dp, dt, and de, dt. Okay? Semicolon. Save it again. And now if I give it some values of x, like for example, s is equal to 1, millimolar, uh, there's, and say there's no initial product present, and then the enzyme um, E0 is 1. If I say that, that E, unbound enzyme, is 1, that means that there would be no complex form. So the initial conditions are you have some E, you have some S, but you have no complex and you have no product, okay, or the, c the conditions. And then this is the rates of change that we get. So the rate of change of, of E is minus 1. The rate of change of P is 0. There's no product. Um, being formed at, at these concentrations because there's no complex, and the rate of change of E is the same as the rate of change of S because they're changing by the same reaction. Okay, so that's just computing the 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 ordinary the the right hand sides of the ordinary differential equations. It's not simulating the differential equations. How do we simulate the differential equations? So we're going to use a um, something called an ODE 
solver, okay? And I happen to know that there is an ODE solver called, o ODE stands for Ordinary Differential Equation, and I happen to know that there's an ODE solver code o called ODE15S. And you can always find out information about what kind of built-in function you want to use in MATLAB by typing doc, D-O-C. Well, here's an example. Here, this, this is actually interesting. We say doc, D-X, D-T. Um, we're not going to get any documentation. Okay, we're going to get the comments that we put in there that we didn't put in there. Okay, um, so that's not necessarily all that useful. But we could put comments in there, and then that, that would serve as a documentation for the for the function. If I say doc ODE15S, ODE stands for Ordinary Differential Equation. Don't worry about the 1, 5, and the S. Um, I'll tell you, it tells me how to call that function. Okay, here's the syntax, and I'm actually going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it down here. And instead of solver, I'm going to say ODE15S. Instead of ODE function, I have to use this syntax. And the at symbol DX DT. I have to give it the time span. I'll say I simulate it for 10 seconds or something like that. Um, and I have to give it an initial condition. And I'll say my initial condition is um, what I used up here. 1, 0, 1, okay, and um, and this is the output. It's going to give me a vector. It's going to give me some time and some values for x. And I'm going to put in put a semicolon here. And I'm going to I'm going to press enter and hope it works. Cross your fingers. Ah, it didn't work. Okay, what did I do around here? There are too many too many input. All right. Ah. <laughs> so this is kind of an interesting thing. So I, um, I'll explain this in a moment. But I, well, let me explain it now. So, so um, this what does ODE solver expects us to do? And you can read it in the documentation somewhere. Um, you probably can't see this very well. I'm trying to make it bigger. Um, is it expects to be able to call an OD function with this syntax, t and then y. t is a scalar, it's going to be the time vector, and a column vector y, which actually are the state variables. So um, these differential equations don't depend on t, so I don't really, I didn't put it as one of my, my input arguments. Um, we, could put it, uh, we could put a t there if we wanted to. Um, since it's not used in the function, instead of a T, you can use a squiggle as a placeholder. It doesn't, it, it's going to, that's just a little bit of syntax. Don't worry about the syntax. Let's go back. We'll just leave it as T. It's not used. Um, it doesn't matter. And this should work this time. Aha! So, it didn't give any errors. And what happened is, I believe we have a vector of time going from starting at 0 and going up to 10. And then my output vector x is my three represents my three variables. And if I wanted to, I could say plot t comma x. And there's t uh, on the on the on the x-axis and x on, on on the y-axis. And I happen to know that the blue is the first variable, which is s. S is disappearing. The green is the second variable, which is p. The product is appearing. Okay. And then this is that complex intermediate. So um, it has some interesting kinetics associated with it. If I wanted to grab just the first column of x, I could use this syntax. x is, x is a matrix. Um, let me see. If I type this, it'll tell me x has size 45 times 3. OK, it's a matrix of um, with with three columns and, and, and 45 rows. And if I want uh, just the first column, I would say x comma 1. And that's the first column. And I could say plot t comma x comma 1, which is s. And that's what happens to s. OK? Um, x comma 2, that's the product. And x comma 3. OK? Or I can just get all three plotted, do what I did before. If I go back to my, um, if I go back here and I say, well, what if there was a lot more? Um, what if k two was was ten times faster? 
say. Uh, let me save that, or, or that second step was 10 times faster, then we would expect we, we, we re-simulate the system, and we replot it, and we would expect things to go faster. Ah, and indeed they do. Okay, so um, so there you have it in a nutshell. Really, really simply, how do we use, how, how can we translate something like this, uh, the system of differential equations into 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 MATLAB and then simulate that. The main step is simply just writing these equations down in some kind of a function that uh, spits out those these derivatives, ds dt dp dt dt dt. And we also have to define all the all the parameters and other things that these equations use. Okay, so really really simple um, way way to get you going in simulating systems with MATLAB.